Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Tracy, if you haven't been here before, and this is a DIY upcycling channel. Now I've gotten a lot of requests for my headbands and I used to make and sell them along with a lot of other things. And they were always really popular and a lot of fun and easy to make. Now I just make mine out of upcycled materials, scraps, found treasures, things that I have around my sewing room. Really easy sewing. Let's get going. The first thing you want to do is take a tape measure and just measure how you, big you want the finished headband to be. Now, wherever you wear it, I wear mine kind of like this. Maybe you wear yours up and down. Just measure, and mine is typically 20 inches, my finished headband. I want my finished headband 20 inches, so I cut my rectangle 20 and a half. Now, it's not quite a rectangle, and I had to piece it together. This is literally all I have left of a really cool sort of velvety blazer, and I wanted to use this, so I'm making it work. It's three and a half inches here and three here. You know, that is just all I have. So I'm just going to fold it like this. Since I'll have to sew these two ends together, I'm going to make sure they line up like that. Now I'm going to my machine and I'm going to fold the top and the bottom on top of itself, right sides together, quarter of an inch. And with a straight stitch, sew all the way down on both sides. Now I'm just going to sew some remnants of ecru colored different laces. I'm just going to sew them on the edge and I will put it over top of this seam here about halfway. I'll put that seam about halfway and I will not pin these. I will just take these little remnants over to my machine with me and I will Use a zigzag stitch, my gold colored thread, and get those sewn on. So when this is on, most of the decoration is going to be seen in a actually pretty small area. So I am going to take a pin and I'm going to find the center and I am going to mark that and just keep it there until it gets in my way. That'll help me determine where I put a lot of that decoration. I want to keep it in most of it within like a five inch section. Okay, so here's my pin, my center, about three and a half inches over. That brings me to here. I'm just going to lay some bits of lace. I have kind of a pink one. Most of these are dyed from other projects. I have another piece of ecru color. I think I'm going to keep that more towards the bottom here. And then I have this sort of brownish, kind of a pink mauve tone to it. Put that right there. Now I'm just going to go to my machine and I'm just going to use a straight stitch and sew those on. Now, I have a tattered little piece from a silk blouse. This is the seam, and I like that. I want to see the seam. Now, here's another tattered little piece from a silk, another silk blouse, and I can see the seam. So, I'm just going to put my purple one there, pink one there, and then I have this little tattered piece of lace. I'm going to lay it right here, and I'm going to cover up that stitching that I just did on those fringes. Now, maybe I'll pin these, and I'm going to take them to my machine, and I am going to use a zigzag stitch on the lace, and then a straight stitch, and just go around the edges on these pieces. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have this little necklace pendant. It kind of feels like mother of pearl. It's really pretty. And I'm going to sew that on. So here's my center pin. Over two inches, I put a pin there so I could remember. And I am just going to sew it on with the jump ring. There isn't anywhere else to sew it. Otherwise, I would like to sew it better. But I can only sew it in one spot. And I'm going to sew that right there so that the flower is sort of in the center here. Now I want to take this earring. This is one I made a long time ago. Um, any chandelier sort of fun earring would work. I'm going to clip off that hook and I am going to lay it right over top of that fringe. I want it above the fringe, but I want the chandelier sort of part of the earring mingled in with the fringe. And now I'm just going to sew it on. I like to match the color of the jewelry and not the color of the fabric when I'm choosing thread. And so I'll use like a dark gold color to sew that on. I'll just find a few gaps. Okay, now I have this sort of beaded chain and this is what this pendant came off of. It's really pretty. I'm going to keep it doubled just like this and then I'm going to snake it through the headband like it comes up here, down here, down and will end maybe right there. And I think I will stick a few pins in it if I catch it right behind the pearls, it should stay in place pretty good with the pins. That just helps me to stay on track when I'm sewing. I'm going to sew this on and I will just sew the chains together in certain areas. That way I don't have to stitch each chain because it's doubled. So I will sew the ends, but then probably about here, 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 and then the end. You know, maybe a, every three, four inches. I'm just using regular old standard thread. I have my needle doubled and a knot at the bottom. And I'm just going to start at one end, get that sewn on. Okay, so I just finished sewing this end and my needle is the thread is on the back of the headband. The next place I want to sew is right here where this pin is. And so what I'll do on the back, I don't want to drape my thread from here all the way to here. That leaves a vulnerable piece of thread. It could break really easily. So what I like to do is just weave it. I could tie it off, knot it, and move over. But I typically just sort of weave my needle in and out over to the next spot that I want to sew, which is right, oh, right here. So I will just weave that over. Okay, now I'm at the end. Just going to put my last stitch in and tie it off in the back. Okay, do you see that my chain has a lobster claw clasp on it? I rarely clip those off because it's an opportunity and a super easy way to add another detail. So. I have this little earring part and it has a jump ring on it. I'm just going to hook it to the clasp and there I have another cute detail. So now I have a couple buttons. I went to my tub of vintage buttons and tried to find two that had some luster to it. And I am going to put one right there and one right there and get it sewn on. 
Okay, I got everything sewn on that I want. And now I am going to sew it together. And I'm going to do right sides together. Sometimes I do wrong sides together so that the seam's on the outside. And I am going to do my second to largest zigzag stitch and stay close to the edge. Okay, so there's the headband. So gorgeous. Now, what if you get all done and it's too loose on your head? It can be tricky to get these to fit your head just right. You could always go back in and make your seam allowance larger and make it smaller. But what I like to do is a little trick with elastic. Now I have half an inch elastic. I've used quarter inch and I'll show you what I do. Okay, I have my headband inside out. I drew about a three inch line down the center, about an inch and a half on each side of that seam. And now I am just going to take my elastic. I usually leave it on a roll if it's on a roll because I don't know how much really I'm going to need. So I'll take this to my machine, put the uh, needle above this line at the top, and then stick my elastic in and stretch and sew that all the way down to this line. Because then look what happens when you release it. It scrunches up a little bit right there. I'm using my second to largest zigzag stitch for this. There's my line. Okay, it's all done. How easy and fun is that? I'll take you all the way around. I found this old mannequin head in my storage room. I forgot I had her, but she has no hair. Okay. Headband one is done. Now let's do another one. My next one's going to be a tie headband. And I'm using a piece of lace. I'm not sure where it's from. It has a little stretch to it, so I'll have to use a zigzag stitch on the whole thing. If you use a straight stitch and stretch it, it'll pop those threads. My piece of lace is 57 inches long and seven inches tall. Now, these are versatile and so fun because you can wear them as a headband, you can wear them as a belt, you can wear them as a neck piece, you could wear them as a hat band. I mean, just so many possibilities. Hang them on a hook in your room and you're not wearing it and it would just be a pretty decoration. Okay, this is what we're doing. Okay, first thing I did was found the center and just stuck a little safety pin in there for now. Okay, I know it's hard to see this lace, but I tried it with a blue tablecloth underneath and then you can't see my blue, uh, my blue lace. So what I'm going to do right now is the whole length of this lace, I have these bluish green remnants from another project. Now, all these are dyed over time. <laughs> I have a bunch of this kind of thing. I have lots of tutorials on how to dye with Rit Dye um, and dye more. So I am just going to lay these in the center of the lace. And at each end, I will have the colored lace extend past the white lace and just slightly snake it all the way down. I want it pretty centered. And this is something I'll just do at my machine. I will not pin that on or anything. And use my zigzag stitch and get that all sewn down the center. Okay, 
Now I have some ecru colored lace and I'm not laying it all the way to the end like I did the green. I Here's the center pin. I'm stopping this one here and this one about there. And I just kind of laid on three pieces, kind of like a little wave. And I'll pin these on in a few spots so I don't get confused at my sewing machine. And I'll get those sewn on as well. Okay, so now we're looking at sort of the front middle. Here's my safety pin. Now, this will be very seen, very noticeable. So I'm going to add a little bit extra decoration. This is just some trim off an uh, old thrifted shirt. Now I'll have to move my pin to sew that on. And maybe I'll put a little piece like that right there. Okay, so here's my middle pin. About three and a half inches over, I'm going to do a little bundle of fringe. Now I have some blue bedsheet, actually is what it was, dyed. Some pink lace and a little bit of this sort of binding and kind of a brownish caramel color. I'm just going to go to my machine, carry it over it like this, and stitch it. I'm not going to take you to the machine every single time because it'll be a lot of running back and forth. Okay, now I have another bundle of fringe, a blue fabric bow, some ecru color trim from that shirt, and just some sort of pinky lace. And I am going, here's my center, I'm going four inches this way, and I'm going to sew that little cluster right there. Well, it's kind of hard to film something this long. I want to do a close-up and then how it looks on the entire piece. But, all right, so I just did these fringes. And now what I want to do is about 15 inches from the bottom over here, I am going to sew just sort of a blue bow-looking cluster. And then about six inches from the end i'm just going to sew a piece of pink right in the middle about right there and then on this end i just have a cluster i have pink lace and a little piece of pink and it's about 15 inches from the bottom so i'm just going to go get these pieces sewn on okay again there's the center and I have this sort of blue crochet flower looking. It was from a bigger piece, but sometimes they have flower shapes in there you can cut out. And I'm going, oops, I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And I have a little corner right here. I am going to sew right above this group of fringe maybe really close to it because I don't know how well that lace will hold. And I am going, I won't pin this, but I will stitch right over top of that corner right there. And then it becomes sort of a floppy little flower. And I'm gonna use my zigzag stitch and I'm going to go over it a few times because that's a lot of fabric to get through. So I want to make sure it holds. Okay, so this is sewn on. I'm going over to this little cluster and I have this pink little doily. I'm just going to find the center here and lay it on top of this little ribbon at my machine and do the same thing. Just stitch right there. While I'm over there, <laughs> I'm going to sew this little. Now this was cut from a piece of lace and this is the left side as you're looking at it. I'm going to sew that right over top of that stitching on this little bow. And this time I'm just going to come in, oh, a good half an inch and just go around the little circle right here and sew it. 
That way it'll still be a little bit dimensional. Okay, all done. Now you can add jewelry and things like that, but the nice thing about not adding it is it's washable. You can wash this in a gentle cycle and let it air dry. This is more of a sort of a festival headband. So fun. Now the next one, the base is going to be this lining fabric from the suede jacket. Okay, so I have this odd sort of piece. It's 20 and a half inches long because that's the size that fits my head. And it ranges from five and a half to three and a half because that's just what I had to work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on its right side and I will not pin this or anything, but I will take it to my sewing machine and I will just make a straight stitch down the top. Okay, so now what I want to do is I have some more of this Ecru colored lace. Now I want about a good half an inch, three quarters of an inch of this showing. So I'm going to lay my lace down about like that. I want it to extend over the top of this piece, but I still want to see a little bit of it down here. And so I'll just overlap this one. And then down here at the end, we got kind of a weird small piece. I'm going to put a thicker, chunkier piece of lace there to give that side a little more body. And I am just going to stitch this on. I'll stitch it on like a big rectangle. I'll use my zigzag because I like using that with lace. Go up the side. This one I'll catch the fabric underneath. Just go all the way around. Okay, so now it's looking like this. And I cut some fabric strips. This is kind of a hippie pattern, kind of fun. And I'm going to lay that one there. This one about here. And then this is actually not just velvet. This is a piece from a velvet, a vintage velvet wedding blanket. So it's more like a tapestry, kind of thick. And I'm going to lay that about there. Now I'll stick a few pins in there and then I will just use a straight stitch on this one because these are kind of narrow and I just want to go around the edge of all three pieces and get those sewn on. Okay, there's what that is looking like. So rich and pretty looking, I think. And now I just want to add a little bit of metal, some different texture. And recently my girlfriend gave me a few bags. She was cleaning out her closet and this belt was in there. And this is not leather and usually this is super easy to sew through, this sort of faux leather. And so I am going to, I think, start by cutting off two of these little strips. I'll start with two. I may want more. I may only want one. We'll see. Okay. I think I just want one. When I put two on there, it really seems to hide a lot of that beautiful fabric. And I just want this to be an accent, not the whole focal point of the headband. So I am just going to lay this right here. And I will go to my machine and just right at the edge, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch back and forth a couple times on that end. And I will do it on this end as well. Okay, so I have that sewn on. Now at the end kind of has that, those ugly stitch marks. So this was just laying around this jacket. And it has really pretty buttons on it, and they're metal. 
And I am going to, I already clipped one off. I am just going to sew it right there at the end. And I'll seam rip another one off of here and sew it at the other end. Okay, here's what that looks like. Yeah. Here's what it looks like on the back. And now I'm going to finish it by putting right sides together, lining up the edges here, doing a zigzag stitch. I might go over it a couple times just to make sure it's durable. Okay. How cute. Now, mine was a little too small, so I had to cut it open in the back, and I added a piece of lace. No big deal. Now, these are pretty fast, simple ones. You can get elaborate. You can sew all kinds of beads and charms and braids, whatever you want. I'm going to turn this um, the other way. Gives you a little bit of a different look with the lace on the bottom. Almost like a little hat. So fun. All right. That's it. Thank you so, so much for watching.